Today's the morning after. Last night we commemorated Wisaka Bucha. It was the evening, or the night when the Buddha came to awakening, and also the night when he passed away. So you can imagine the next day, the next day after the awakening, a huge sense of relief. The work was done, the path was found, the goal was attained. They say that he spent the next seven weeks under the Bodhi tree, or, and, or trees nearby, experiencing the bliss of release. So it's good to remind us that is possible. You look at your mind, there's work to be done, as long as there are moods that push you up and pull you down. You've got to work on them, try to free the mind from them. When we're doing concentration, we basically don't pay attention to them. The seeds for those moods are there in the background, but we don't give them any attention. And when we don't give them attention, we're not feeding them. If they do begin to move into the mind, we find some quick way of dealing with them. You read the short teachings of the Ajahns, the books where the student comes and has a problem and the Ajahn has a quick answer. But where did the Ajahns get that quick answer? They had to learn how to use them in their own minds. Greed comes in, you have to have a quick answer to greed. Anger comes in, you need a quick answer to greed, otherwise these things move in and take over. And John leaves them as just like animals moving into your house. You let the birds fly in, you let all the creepy crawly things come into the house. And after a while it's theirs. And you have no place where you can stay in comfort. So when something comes into the mind, cut it off as quickly as you can. Whatever reasons the mind will give for why it's good to think about this or get worked up about that get angry about this, have greed for that, you have to have a quick response. This is one of the reasons why we read the Dharma, so we get an idea of what the John's quick responses were. Now we, we can use them on ourselves. Of course, after all, the defilements get used to one quick response and they'll have a quick answer, so you need new responses all the time. This is what exercises your discernment. But the important thing is that you maintain that desire that you don't want to become their servant. You want to be in charge. They talk about having mindfulness in charge. This is what it means. You, if there's something good that hasn't arisen in your mind yet, you try to give rise to it. If there's something good is already there, you make sure that it doesn't pass away. We're told so often that mindfulness is just a matter of watching things arise and pass away on their own. But right mindfulness has an agenda. It wants to give rise to skillful thoughts. It wants to maintain skillful thoughts, which of course pushes the unskillful ones out of the, out of the mind. So you read the Dharma, listen to the Dharma, try to get some idea of what will work for you. And then of course you can use your own ingenuity. If you can come up with your own answers to your own defilements, so much the better. That's when you begin to make the Dharma really your own.